The following podcast contains explicit language. This is Paul Wilson. And I'm Danny Voss. And we're here with the Diesel Performance Podcast. Thank you for listening. Uh, to get started today, I always want to say, please, more and more of you are jumping on our Facebook page, messaging us, liking our posts, finding us in the Facebook forums. Please continue that. We love that type of interaction. Make a comment. Please uh, share it with your friends. Absolutely. Rate us on iTunes. Today, we do have an awesome episode. I'm really excited for this one, Danny. I am too. We have Katie Pajeska, LB7 Katie on the line. Katie, how's it going today? I'm good. How are you guys? If I was any better, I'd be you. <laughs> good answer Danny good answer <laughs> Katie's obviously well known in the diesel market uh, I actually was I was doing a little bit of research and I'm doing the air quotes as I say research I mean wasting time at work but uh so I was searching up LB7 Katie on Facebook and I found every single diesel truck of the month possible has at one time had LB7 Katie as their truck of the month she's the bomb you, yeah, I think I have been the truck of the month a million times. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Katie, we obviously know you from over at Calibrated Power when you had your LB7 up there with the big twins on it. And we'll get to that here in the episode. I think for today, we'd like to start where we always start. Uh, tell us what got you into the diesel performance market. When I was growing up, I learned to drive a truck, actually, as my first vehicle. I learned in a first-gen Cummins. Uh, so when I turned 18, of course, you know, I wanted a truck. So I bought my first truck and it was a Cummins. It was not a Duramax. Oh, so no. unfortunately I started in a Dodge. <laughs> Heartbroken. Uh, I had, it was right. I know it was awful. It was probably the <laughs> biggest mistake I think I've ever made was buying a Cummins. <laughs> so <laughs> I bought my first truck when I turned 18. I bought a 2005. Uh, it was black, and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world, and I grew to learn that black is the worst color to buy for a truck. <laughs> they look great when they're clean, but they get yes, dirty quick. Yes, like cleaning it. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I started in a Dodge. Um, I didn't have it very long. Um, as far as, like, modifications goes, I didn't actually make any to the truck. Uh, back in 2008 was when I bought that truck. Uh Diesels weren't the coolest thing in the world. I think diesel was, what, $5 a gallon back in 08? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I made the mistake of buying a truck, you know, once <laughs> diesel was, of course, $5 a gallon. <laughs> now, don't lie. Um, you say no modifications. I know you had a big C in the back window. Uh, I did. I had two. <laughs> I two. had two big Cs. <laughs> I did. Yep. I had two, and I had stacks. Oh, got to have them. Gotta have them. stacks on I mean, thirty-five it's not, it's inch tires. Without stacks, right? Yes, thirty-five. Yep, that's it. Now <laughs> I just want our listeners to know who we really are talking to. This is Katie uh, P. We call her here, and she drives a thousand horsepower LB7 Duramax. That that's badass. Unbelievable. Absolutely. Hey, pardon the interruption, folks. I'm Nick Pregnance with Calibrated Power Solutions. I do sponsor this podcast, so please allow me five seconds to remind you that if you really enjoy the technical content on this podcast and would like similar minds working on your truck's powertrain problems, give us a call at CPS, 815-568-7920. Again, that's 815-568-7920. Now back to business. So did you go straight from the 05 Cummins and jump into the LB7? I did. I had my Cummins for about a year and then I drove my first Duramax. Uh, a buddy of mine had a 2005, so I drove it. And then shortly after, I sold my Dodge and was immediately on the market for a Duramax. Wow, sold on an LLY. Ooh. I, yeah, I know, and I hate <laughs> LLYs. They're like the redheaded stepchildren of the Duramax world. <laughs> You're preaching to the choir, Katie. We love hey, it. That's our line. That's our line. I had to come on. Yeah, we'll share no, with you. I, I think you're so cool. <laughs> Yeah, no, LLY was a, I don't know why, I wanted one so bad, too. It, it's because the turbo whistle, you know, it makes that noise, so it's like, oh, my God, turbo noises, I got to have it. <laughs> but I learned I learned after a while that LLY is not the way to go. <laughs> yeah, they, they definitely have their pitfalls when stock, right? Yeah, turbo noise, right. turbo noise is like, to me, a natural aphrodisiac. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, We're yes, going to teach is. you how to pronounce that word one of these days, Danny, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Katie, so you got this LB7. What was done to it when you bought it? Absolutely nothing. It was one owner prior to me. I bought it with 129000 on it. 
Um, some old guy owned it before I did. It has a gooseneck hitch in it, and that was about it. It was bone stock. Oh, wow. You gotta love a virgin. You get to get in there and do it your way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so what was your first mod? What'd you get started with on it? Uh, the first thing I did, I put an exhaust on it and uh, intake was the first thing I did. Pretty standard. Okay. Uh, I didn't get tuning on the truck for, I don't I think maybe three years into owning it. I what? Yeah, I know. I was a rookie back in the day. I don't think I actually got into modding my truck until about 2012. Oh, wow. So I bought the Duramax in 2009 and then officially started modding it in like 2012. Okay. What'd you, what'd you start with? Uh, where'd you go with it? Intake and exhaust was first thing done to it. And then tuning, I didn't even do EFI Live until 2014, maybe. Maybe a little earlier than that. Maybe 13. I put a bully dog on it for my first tuner. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Boring. Know, right? It was and at the time, I didn't have any money, so it was like, this is what I can afford. So I went with a bully dog, like, just, you know, plug-in tuner. Um, it was good for, you know, learning, getting into the truck, but that is not the way to go if you're going to have a Duramax. <laughs> sure. Now, were you doing any racing at that time? Were you all just driving around on the street or off-road? Or how were you using the truck from 08 to, to 14 or 08 to 13 there? Uh, it was a daily driver, so I drove it year-round, and then... Um, you know, pulled horse trailers with it and worked on the farm. Okay. Okay. When did you start getting in? So what, or I'm sorry, when you started getting into modding it, how did it start to change then? Cause I know I've seen quite a few track passes from LB7 KD. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I put EFI live on it and then right away was like, okay, what's next? <laughs> so in, well, that's exactly how it goes too. I mean, you can't just, if you want a race truck, and I'm doing the air quotes, race truck, <laughs> um, EFI Live isn't the way to go without the modifications to go with it. So back in, what was it, 2000, winter of 2013 into 2014 is when I started doing my bolt-on modifications or your stock-built truck, air quotes once again, <laughs> stock-built. Stock. <laughs> Another fully-built stock truck. Here we go. Exactly, and that's what it was. I mean, it was Craigslist boy built. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard that. So who, you know, everybody that we talk to, even including myself and Paul, we all can date back to, you know, who inspired us to do this. I mean, who got you into all this? What, when was that? Um, I think, I think I just got myself into it on um, just in generally with being on social media and seeing all the cool trucks back in 2012, 13 and 14. You know, you see them and you're like, well, I have a diesel. I want to do that, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, I think that's one of those powers of social media is you do start to see what is possible. And you start to see what are, what are your options out there. And you kind of start to consider. And then you think back, what am I going to do for my truck? So so we had it fully built stock. I take it this was a built trans and every bolt-on we could buy, right? Um, Built trans didn't come until 2014 when I did the rest of the modification. So I put a 366 on it with 60% over injectors that I got from Merchant and uh, head studs. What else? That's about it. I don't think I really did anything other than, you know, built trans, a turbo, and some injectors. Wow. And you did all that in one shot? Yeah, I did all that. It was prior to the big twin kit or compound kit. Okay. Uh, that was my build fully built stock truck um i mean that's a big I jump did. though i mean you went from a 14 5 like a 14 second quarter mile down to what uh, under 12s right i mean s366 1180 1180s you gotta love that yep. i mean that's a huge jump i mean for our listeners out there two seconds in a quarter mile is a night and day difference in yeah. a vehicle you can make a sandwich in the quarter mile you know, <laughs> compared to the faster time <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this S366 60 percent injectors, uh, dual CP3s or 10 mil. Oh, dual CP3s. Yep. Dual CP3s. How did it drive? Um, it was good. Um, I had you know different tuning at the time. It was you know my first EFI live tuning. Uh, it was a little bit smoky, a little laggy. You know, it wasn't it wasn't the greatest. It was still fun to drive on the street. I mean, anything that's 650 horsepower is fun to drive. So. Um, yeah. 
I mean, it did burn up like a champ. <laughs> <laughs> you do those? Rolling heaters. <laughs> <laughs> Who does that? Kids. We do that. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, Dana. You did a burnout from one building down to this building. For, I, was, I thought I was late ago. for the podcast. I didn't want to miss KDP, man. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So you got down to 1180. You're you're starting to cut times. You're starting to look at tenths of seconds instead of three second cuts. Um, it, it drives a little smoky. It drives a little laggy. But a single charger is a lot of fun. You know, I was just yeah. talking to somebody we've had on the podcast before, Chris Emke, today about it, and he's like, "Man, that that big single life. You know, it drove like shit. It was terrible going through a drive through. <laughs> it's just an awful daily drive." He's like. But man, just if you want to have stupid kid fun, let all the power come on at once like a big single. And an S three sixty six, that's not a huge single. That should still be pretty streetable. How would you compare it to the setup you have now? Oh God, night and day difference. If I could do it all over again from the beginning, I would have never done a single. I would have wow. done compounds from the beginning. I probably would have done you know a stock, you know a four seventy five over stock. Um, those are always fun. And they light it lights so much faster than the 366 I had was just lag. That's awesome. That's I think that's like five episodes in a row now. We've heard the same thing from different different <laughs> everybody from manufacturers to end users. Everybody kind of comes back to that same setup and how much they love it. But but you you do not run an S four seventy five stock kit because that would not make nearly enough power for you, from my understandings. No, I do not run a S four seventy five kit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how dare you, Paul? <laughs> rude <laughs> <laughs> not even the rudest thing i've said today but okay um <laughs> we'll get to that that's another conversation so so tell us about you went from this s366 60 percent injectors dual cp3s built trans 1180 truck i mean it was badass like we were talking about you literally have done just about every truck of the month cover i couldn't find a manufacturer or large parts to supplier who hasn't thrown a shout out to your truck or seen your truck at a, a shootout or seen your truck at drag races. You're very, very active in the social media life. What got you motivated to go to the next level? Well, when you have a Duramax, anything over 600 horsepower, you're just waiting to throw a rod. So <laughs> as time went on, I mean, I drove it, you know, very hard for a good solid year with that 366 setup. I beat the crap out of it. I did burnouts pretty much every day, just stupid kid fun, like you said. But, you know, eventually you start to hear that knock and then you start, you know, getting paranoid, like it's going to happen any day now. So before I threw, you know, threw a rod, I figured, well, I might as well just build the engine and save myself some time. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least save yourself a tow bill, right? I mean, that's what I always exactly. say. Exactly. <laughs> we all know it's going to happen. It's just a matter of, do I want to drive it to somewhere to get it repaired or do I want to tow it there? Right. Sometimes you don't have a choice, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, riding with the tow truck driver is always that awkward one when they ask what happened, and you're like, eh, rolling heaters for, for, for 12 months? I don't know. Okay. So, okay. you know, I hear a rumor that this truck of yours drives pretty awesome. I, uh, you know, I, I've heard from a lot of people that uh, have seen it, driven it, and, uh, can say nothing but awesome things on the way it drives. And, you know, Bob Peterson uh, of Calibrated Power says that it's a tire shredding machine. How, uh, you still got some tread left on the tires there or what? I do because I got so back, in, you know, late late last season that I didn't get a chance to do any burnouts. I think I did one. <laughs> <laughs> and so, then it's been parked. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so so let's tell all all of our listeners about your build. Walk us through it. Let's see. Built motor. Uh, not fully built stock, fully built motor. <laughs> <laughs> so the motor was built by uh, Worley or WC Fab um, down in Illinois. I did Carrillo rods, uh, SoCal girdle, fingers oval bowl pistons, uh, board 20 over. Let's see. Uh, ported heads, comp cams, valve springs and retainers, screw and injector cup. For fuel, there's 150% uh, extra G injectors. An Air Dog 4G, and then I have a DRP fuel sump. Um, I also did screw in uh, screw in injector cups and billet hold downs. Um, I did a SoCal 9100 alternate fire cam. Uh, typical head studs, uh, ARP rocker arms, uh, SoCal dampener, and then I have a fully built billet trans from Merchant. 
And then for the turbos, we did the S5 91 over uh, Duramax Tuner Stealth uh, 64 and a half. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if your dick isn't hard, quit listening. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! No, that it really is a blast. I got to drive the truck. Danny wasn't here yet, but but I did get yeah. to drive the truck, and uh, it's scary, stupid fast. I, the- uh, it scared the shit out of me the first time I drove it because <laughs> me, I just want to do burnouts all the time. So we get down to Worley once it was done, and the first thing I did was jump in it, back it up, and try and did a burnout in Worley's parking lot. <laughs> and the thing got sideways so fast it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I went from I went from 650 to a thousand horsepower, so I mean it was a huge change. It, you know, probably the rings aren't even broken in yet, and you're breaking in the rubber. You know, <laughs> I do what I can. Yeah, hey, you you build it to beat it, right? Isn't that the rule? That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so no no track times yet. No, not yet. Um, you know, I live in Minnesota where it's freezing cold, you know, pretty much six months out of the year. <laughs> we got it back late in September last year, and then uh, the transmission needed rebuilt. So I sent the tranny back out down to a merchant and had them rebuild it, go through the clutches, put all new clutches and stuff in it. But it's good to go this season. I can't wait to get it to the track. Oh, my God. Do you have a schedule? Like, do you know where you're going to go first? Uh, there is a track. It's like two hours from here. I can't even remember the name of it, to be honest. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. It's somewhere up here in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> well, Next to one of those lakes? <laughs> yeah, one of them. It's 10,000 lakes. <laughs> right. Well, we're, we're definitely going to have you back on after you've run the first pass, and I think everybody's going to be dying to find out what's the time. Um, I know I am. What's That's... your prediction, Paul, and what's your prediction, Katie? Oh, yeah, Katie, let's hear yours yeah. first. Yeah, what are you, what are you hoping you to run? I'm hoping it runs a 10.5. I have to run a 10.5 or I'm going to be pissed and we're changing turbos. <laughs> <laughs> What's the weight on it? Uh, I don't remember because I've dropped a bunch of weight. Um, I'm also lowering it more. I just ordered a DG, DJM 3.5 drop. So it's going to sit a lot lower to the ground and then uh, get rid of the 20-inch rims. And I've got a set of 16s with the Mickey Thompson uh, Easy Streets. For radial. Nice. Get rid of some of that unsprung weight. Yes. <laughs> That'll help. Ten five. What are you shooting? What are you thinking, Danny? With me driving or with you? <laughs> you driving? <laughs> I mean, there's a difference here. I, I mean, I'll tell you what. If you can, if you can get a, a better sixty foot in that truck than I can, <laughs> Rich will come and clean your house. Rich is our producer. He's he's, he's uh, nodding he yes for all of our listeners out there. Um, what do you think? I only have fourteen hundred square feet, so I ain't gonna take it too long, man. <laughs> uh, my prediction, you know, the hardest thing is gonna be hooking. You know, if you can get that truck to hook, there should be no reason why you can't hit the number that you you want to hit there. A ten five in mm-hmm. it. I'll be honest, man. I'm thinking back. Uh, Duramax tuner race truck. Very similar setup, 67 in the valley instead yeah. of 64 and a half. I think they went to 250% injectors, but plenty of fuel on, on both sides, I would say. You're going to hate me, Katie. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say 1090 is your first pass. Oh, I'm going to say 1090. 1090 is your first pass. All, all factors factored in. Right. I think the truck may be capable. Like Danny said, hooking up. I Man, I don't know. What kind of front end you got under that thing? Uh, well, we're doing the 3.5 drop. So the DGM kit comes with new... Uh, control arms and stuff like that and then it's got a ppe center link and uh rare parts tie rods nice so yeah. I have full interior still changes yeah. yeah full interior uh it's an extended cab so i took out the back seat and then i'll ditch the probably the center console and the passenger seat when i take it to the track okay okay i mean yeah, ten five. I mean, ten five is probably a real good prediction. I'm not gonna lie. Ten ninety is always that first pass out, right? <laughs> yeah, like, get I, I could see it. get it out of the yeah. way. Yeah, get it, get it chalked <laughs> off. I had one bad one, um, but I could see it too in ten five. I don't think that's gonna be too much of a stretch. Just don't let Paul drive it. <laughs> <laughs> it'll it, the reason it, it'll do a ten five if I drive it. You just you'll need to trailer it home for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I don't have the best luck with keeping things together at the track, but no, all BS aside, I mean, how when you're driving this truck around, how often are you actually using all this horsepower? I mean, are you driving it pretty conservatively on the streets if you're not doing burnouts, or are you are you pretty nice to it on the road? 
I'm pretty nice to it. I drive like a grandma, to be honest with you. If I'm not doing burnouts, I drive like an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> How does that uh, converter feel like driving with light throttle input? Sometimes we hear about some of those higher stall converters really lock up pretty hard when you're light throttle on them. Are you running into any issues I, with that? No, no issues. Um, I have the Gorin uh, converter with the billet stator. Uh, it locks smooth. You don't even feel it lock. It's not harsh at all. Um, I really like it. At first, I hated it because I had the same trans with the 366 setup, and the converter and the stall just, they didn't match right because I had the trans built for knowing what setup I was going to do in the future. All right. But with the new compound setup, it, it locks great. It runs, it's so smooth. Okay. Any pitfalls throughout building your, your truck here over the last several years? Any things you would warn people to stay away from? Yeah, don't do a fully built truck. <laughs> fully built stock truck or fully built truck <laughs> either or um, i think in the time that i've had it back you know with living up north i think i've washed it more than i've driven it so i mean it's just one of those things that you know if you don't live somewhere where it's super nice most of the time then you know i really don't drive it that often and as much as i should i should say um, but hopefully this year it'll be a lot different with, I finally got everything, you know, squared away, had some electrical issues, got those fixed. Um, but when you have a built truck, we call them gremlins. So <laughs> the gremlins always come out and they just fuck shit up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about, how about things, the good advice, what's the best piece of advice you could give to somebody who's considering building their truck, whether fully built stock or built, built stock or. Whatever they're going to do with it. What, what's good advice for our new diesel comers? <laughs> yeah, really, fully, um, really I would, built. <laughs> I would say, you know, start simple. Um, you know, if you're, if you're planning on doing stuff in the future, do it once. Don't do it twice. You know, I did injectors my first time around. You know, it's an LB7, so it's injector issues. But the first time I did injectors, I wish I would have went, you know, 150 overs and just had it detuned instead of having to send injectors out twice and have them done multiple times. Right. So be smart when you're building something. Um, plan ahead. You know, make sure budget wise you stay within your budget. If you make one, don't go over budget. Terrible it's advice. Just add more headaches. Ter totally disagree with that advice. If you make a budget, <laughs> it is a a goal or a lie that you told to your your significant other, and that's about it. There, there. What, what is a budget? A budget. That's right. A, yeah. No budget. I don't yeah. know what that is. <laughs> I, I want lotto numbers, right? But but I don't I don't plan on them. I don't <laughs> stick myself to picking the same four every week. I'm just saying they just you know they're just numbers. No, I hear you though. <laughs> that that is that is really good advice, Danny. How often do we hear people tell newcomers plan, research, find out what you want to do? I like the 10x plan. Whatever you think uh, you think it's going to take, times that by 10, and that might be the outcome. Ooh. I like now that's a budget I could get into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, truth. no, I didn't have a budget. I thought I did, but it went out the window a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, Katie, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast today. Uh want to thank everybody for your iTunes reviews. I believe we got one from you as well, Katie. We appreciate that. Uh if people want to get in touch with you or if they want to see you out at a track, what's a good way for them to find you? Um, well, I'm not on social media anymore. Uh you can find me on Duramax Diesels. I'm on the forum. Perfect. Find LB7 Katie on the Duramax Forum. This has been Paul Wilson. And I'm Danny Voss. Thanks for listening. The Diesel Performance Podcast is brought to you by Calibrated Power Solutions, home of DuramaxTuner.com, developer of performance engine and transmission calibrations for a wide variety of late model diesel powertrains, including the Duramax, Cummins, John Deere, Jeep, and many more. For more information and the best customer service in the industry, check out CalibratedPower.com or call 815-568-7920.